Hi, everybody. Um, let's get started for today. Um, so I'm happy to um, see everybody, um, everybody today. Uh, this will be our third installment of the Spark series, Spark Student Speaking Series. Um, just to rehash, the Spark series came from a, a CCI innovation project a couple years ago. Um, based on discussions internally, we determined that um, it'd be really good that to, to create a series for students. Um, so to hear from other students, and that's how Spark was born. Um, like I said, this is our third installment. Um, there'll be another one coming probably within the next two or three weeks, so please keep your eyes on that. Um, today, I'm happy to announce, I'm happy to, to, to say we have two speakers. Um, so Steve Earth will be our first speaker today. Steve is a PhD computer science student, and he'll be talking about um, the trans, the, the um, adapting to the new online learning environment. So he'll get some um, techniques to help raise your productivity in the face of the challenges um, of being a remote learner. Following Steve is Jason Gov. Um, he will talk about um, his leadership experience with several Drexel University student groups. Um, and also, and as a Microsoft student partner, he'll talk about student clubs, how to build the clubs, um, how to build relationships, um, and, and what, what to take out of being in a club or, or, or leaving a club. Um, as I wrote in the chat, feel free, if you have questions, feel free to write them in the chat. I will um, ask questions following the, um, each of the speakers. Um, if you do have questions for the speakers and you'd like to ask them, um, there'll be some time after each, uh, each um, individual speaker. So with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Steve Earth, who's gonna talk about um, learning from home. Steve? Hi there, everybody. Uh, one second while I uh, unmute myself here. I think that's better. Uh, everyone can hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I see people nodding. All right. Um, so hopefully you have access to a Zoom poll uh, where you can click on a response. I just kind of put it up here on the intro screen, but just sort of getting the pulse of the audience here to get a feel for how you feel your productivity has been affected right now compared to with the lockdown compared to how it was earlier. Um, I don't know if you all can actually see the results. I actually see the results as they come in, but I think that might just be because I'm the, I'm the host. Um, I'll end the polling in, in a second here. It looks like, well, it's telling me only 61% of people have have actually voted. So I don't know if that's uh, people are just too shy. It's, it's anonymous, by the way, so I, I won't see your results. Um, I mean, I'll see the results, but I won't know it's assigned to you. Um, but I'm, I'm going to end it in just a second so we can, we can go on. Um, oh, good. Some more results just came pouring in. Great. Um, well, it does look like the majority of people said slightly worse. Uh, thankfully, no one has yet said significantly worse. Uh, but no one has also said significantly better. Uh, we do have a couple of people that said slightly better, and about a third people say it's about the same. So, okay, um, pretty good. I was, I was expecting worse. So I think we, we may already be on the, on the right track. Uh, I think if I click this button, it will share the results with you all. All right, cool. So what this talk is gonna be about is just giving you some tips that if you are staying about the same or slightly worse, that maybe we can get it ramped up and, and make it a bit better. So oh, let me end the here. All right, so here is my first recommendation, and that is to try to follow a routine schedule. Uh, it's really easy now in the situation where, you know, you don't have a bus to catch, there's no rush to a lecture. Um, it's just so easy to sort of stay in bed and like slowly but surely things kind of get pushed back. And maybe at first you're good and you're getting up at, you know, 7 or 8 a.m. And then, you know, the next day it's at 9 or 10. And before you know it, you're sleeping into noon. So try uh, to actually stay on the regular schedule that you were before, um, you know, still get in bed get showered, get dressed. Um, even though you don't really have to, I think that it helps the process of setting a schedule and help to get things done. So um, 
I'm actually dressed up now. I actually get dressed up every day, but not as much as I did when I was at school. So for those of you that knew me back when, before we were on lockdown, I'd always be in the whole jack and tie situation. Uh, not so much now. Um, so this is a little trick that I heard about recently. Um, I don't use it myself just because I'm one of those people that I don't even need to set an alarm clock. I just always get up right at six every day. Um, but I know I have a number of friends that they're married to that snooze button. Right? So um, one tip that someone had mentioned to me was that part of the reason why we keep hitting snooze over and over again is that when we first wake up, not all of our brain is entirely awake yet. So the the part that's actually supposed to reason intelligently is still not quite there yet. So you sometimes tell yourself, oh yeah, I'll, I'll get up in five minutes and that will be even better. I don't know exactly what your brain is telling you. I had a friend once tell me that she got convinced that by hitting the snooze button, she was actually going to work. Um, so the tip that was given to me is that when your alarm goes off, before you do anything, just do a little countdown and go five, four, three, two, one, and then launch yourself out of bed. And it turns out that process of doing the counting actually helps activate like the numerical portion of your brain doing the countdown, starts making your brain be awake and you'll make better decisions and actually get. Uh, so here's, here's a big one. Um, and that's to maintain lines of communication. And I don't just necessarily mean with uh, your professors, but that's definitely a big part of it, but also your classmates and TAs, you know, and of course friends. So it's important to try to, keep up that, that social aspect to, to stay productive. Um, uh, you should keep, it's really easy to miss due dates because uh, you're not have that usual face-to-face -face reminders uh, with your, your classes all the time. So I don't know, however best works for you, whether it's through Outlook or uh, keeping a separate paper calendar, uh, but really keep track of the due dates for things. And this is also where that communication goes as well. Hopefully like your professors are communicating with you like little reminders by email or in BB Learn even more so than normal about, hey, don't forget there's a paper due on Friday. Um, I know as a TA, I always try on Slack to put up in the general channel, like don't forget there's a homework coming up tomorrow and so forth. So um, don't necessarily re rely on those reminders, you know, or try to remind yourself by writing it down. Um, and I actually had a little bit of a, a shock in the second week of, uh, of the quarter because it turned out I thought I was being good. And on the, the first week, I had checked BB Learn and checked some due dates. And it turned out the professor updated it at some point in the first week, and I didn't realize it. So um, I almost missed a due date because of that. So check BB Learn every single day in, in every class. So try to be proactive about it and uh, checking for when things are due. All right, so along those lines, I think, and this is actually a, a good step just for life in general, but in particular because of lockdown, and that's setting small achievable goals. And I think there's various ways that you can do this. So uh, one of the things I like to do is give a specific end time. So for say, oh, I'm gonna work on such and such for one to three. Uh, another way is to make a specific duration. So you don't necessarily know exactly when it's gonna start, but just commit to working to two hours on something. So oftentimes they'll say, all right, so whenever I make lunch and finish eating and so forth, I'm gonna start on, you know, grading some homework and I'm gonna grade homework questions for two hours, or I'm going to, you know, read uh, this journal for two hours, you know, whatever it happens to be. So another thing that I sometimes do, uh, rather than lay on time, this might work uh, better for other people, is you set a specific quantity. So, and again, make it small and manageable, right? Don't have these too broad of a goal saying, yeah, I'm going to finish this book by the end of the week. It's too general, right? Set a specific goal for each day. So I'm going to read 20 pages of chapter two, or I'm going to answer the first two questions of this homework assignment. If you keep it too broad, it's too easy to to get lost and not accomplish things. So another thing that you might have observed already in the first few weeks of the quarter we've noticed is that uh, a lot of teachers are expecting uh, the students, their classes to do a lot more reading than they normally would because they figure, well, you know, I'm not lecturing face to face and so I'm going to provide these sort of supplementary readings. Uh, so I think it's important to be aware, you know, set aside time to do these readings and to read them more carefully maybe than you ordinarily would. Um, 
keep in mind, you might have to rely more on the textbook uh, than you used to for explanation, since you don't have that face-to-face -face interaction with the, with the classmates and with the teacher to just easily raise your hand and ask questions. But again, here's where again, communication can also come back into play. Uh, so here's a useful strategy that I find for myself, um, is that whenever I'm reading, I try to make up test questions as I go based upon that reading. So, you know, maybe I'm reading something about, uh, you know, map reduce in a functional language. So I might ask myself, ooh, what would be a good test question I could ask that would check uh, that where, where map reduce would be the answer? And then depending on the actual meaning you're using, whether it's Evernote or sometimes I have jot in the margins like that question and I can use it later for, um, you know, quizzing myself for a future test. Uh, but I think in general, even if there's not an upcoming test of material, it's a good way uh, to recall the information is to just be asking yourself these kind of questions as you go, make up, make up your own questions. All right, so this is a really good tip uh, that I received uh, when the lockdown started just before the, the quarter and uh, I started using it and it has made a huge difference. And uh, that is, you just have a dedicated, you know, study buddy. So it can be a friend or someone you're living with, you know, a parent if you're staying with your parents or a sibling, roommate, you know, whoever it is. And I know with, for me, it was um, my formal, former table partner uh, back in the PhD lab. So this person is now two hours away, but we make a point, we uh, Zoom with each other twice a day, uh, once at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Uh, and again, it's not for very long, it's like 15, 20 minutes, and we just sort of share what our daily goals are, little small daily goals, say, oh, I want to do this, and sometimes we'll challenge each other, it's like, oh, I know you said that would only take an hour, but it sounds like that would take two hours for me, and uh, we sort of plan out the day that way, and then we meet again at 5.30 each day, and just to do, again, a quick little 15-minute checkup on each other, it's like, well, did you actually manage to accomplish what you thought you were going to accomplish and give ourselves, you know, a pat on the back if we did. And I wouldn't say it's scolding, um, but I eventually found that um, just the fact that I know I'm going to, have to report back to him at five o'clock and he's just a friend. It's not like my boss or my advisor or something like that. So it's not a high pressure situation, but there's still the sense of holding myself accountable because I know I'm going to feel bad if I have to go to him and say, oh, you know, I didn't finish, you know, two of the three items that I said I was going to do. Uh, so this is another thing that a friend of mine does, um, and she ordered this whiteboard for herself from Amazon, and she writes on it every day with her daily goals, and then rather than erasing them, she actually crosses it off, and she resets it on Mondays at the start of the week, but she likes to see the cross-offs happen because it makes her feel more, more accomplished, and whenever she can just look up and she can see the stuff that she wrote to, that she still has to do, I thought, oh, that's, that's a pretty good idea. I can't afford the 10 bucks for a whiteboard, but uh, she can. So, and again, I think this is a good rule for life, not just uh, during school and when we're in a tough situation like lockdown, but you know, do your best to stay positive. And one way to do this is don't dwell on the things that you think you're missing or that you don't currently have. Focus on the things that you do have. You know, I'm, I'm a very, uh, you know, every cloud has a silver lining kind of guy. Um, so, I mean, here are some things that I look at uh, for me personally about the, uh, the lockdown. So it's like, oh, I get to work from home now. So I don't have to take that long walk to the office every single day, you know, to campus, or I don't have to spend money on SEPTA anymore, right? Um, also, I can now interact with people that are that are far away, right? I also have a lot more time flexibility. So, um, you know, I didn't necessarily, uh, you know, have to be at 10 a.m. at this lecture. If something comes up and I have to do something else, uh, I can watch it, you know, recorded on video like an hour after it's done. Um, so I try to look at, at the positive side of things. Uh, I thought I've been talking for quite a, quite a bit. So I thought just in the chat, if you want to throw out any other positive examples of things that you see during the lockdown uh, or ways you like to look at things or maybe something that you don't see the positive of yet. Uh, you want to throw it out there. Maybe other people can help. Now, by the way, I actually can't see the chat so because um, of the screen share. So I'm sort of relying on uh, Dave to relay to me anything that you guys might, might type. So I'll give you guys 30 seconds or a minute or so uh, to think on that and reply. And then we can discuss or go on.
So it's a little teacher trick, by the way, to not be afraid of uncomfortable silences. So if you're wondering why I'm glancing down, I'm actually looking at my uh, cell phone to make sure I'm actually giving you the full minute that I said I would. So. So we're starting to get some starting to get some comments. Um, okay. More time to work on non-school related creative projects. Oh, cool! Yeah. Enjoying mom's cooking. <laughs> or in my case, I'm trying to cook more, so I'm trying to enjoy that. Anyone else have any comments? Yeah. So no more cafeteria food. That can definitely be a plus. can wake up five minutes before class. <laughs> That's true. I'm glad you are waking up though for class. That's much better than uh, sleep again. A um, couple more sp spending time with my cat and enjoying husband's oh, yeah. book. Actually folks, I have a cat that usually when I'm on Zoom meetings, he's always crawling all over me. <laughs> um, so he just loves to walk on the keyboard and be in my face all the time, which I actually do normally like, but I purposely put him upstairs uh, so he wouldn't interrupt our, our Spark series. And cool. All Any right, others so come in? Nope. Uh, enjoying husband's cooking, having my college kid home. Oh. Um, <laughs> That's sweet. All right, cool. Uh, anything else comes up, we'll return. We'll have a, a Q and A later, so you can feel free to uh, share things. All right. So uh, I think it's also important to uh, reward yourself for a, a job well done, or sometimes a job not a hundred percent done. Um, so what I try to do is, whenever I finish a, ta uh, a task, I do some something I like. Just take a short little break. Um, you know, I find that. I, you know, when I talk with my study buddy, is I try very hard not to allocate and say, I'm going to spend three hours doing such and such. I think realistically, two hours is probably my limit. And honestly, after about 45 minutes of really intensely doing something, I find I need like a little bit of a break, even if I'm not done doing whatever it is. So when I allocate, you know, two hours or something, it's actually like, it's sort of 45 minute increments. And then I take like a little five minute break. Um, so I can't necessarily endorse snacking. I know some people like to have a little candy or candy bar, but let's try not to gain too much weight over the lockdown. Uh, but some things that you can do, um, this would be a little bit more than a five minute break, this may be a break in between tasks, but you know, I'll watch like an episode of Killing Eve or you know, something on, on Netflix or read a little bit in uh, the, the book that I'm reading or I will reward myself with a little social media, which in my case, because I'm old, is Facebook. I'm sure it's like, Instagram or something for, for most of y'all. Um, again, for some time I have a longer break, I'll go on my PS4. I'm currently playing Final Fantasy VII. Um, one thing I do like about reading is that's a little bit more of a controlled time period. And sometimes it can be hard to, to break away uh, from things. Uh, thankfully, it's always easier if I say, all right, I'm only going to do like my break for 20 minutes. You know, I'll pause the game or I'll pause the show that I'm watching or I'll put down the book. Um, so if you're like me, uh, sometimes you have a little bit of difficulties breaking away. Um, so one thing you can do is um, there are apps that you can use to block yourself. Um, I don't actually use those, but what I do have is um, it used to be on my browser for my startup window. I used to always have Facebook and YouTube come up when I started up, and I've actually taken those off the startup screen. So that way, I, and instead, I actually put BB Learn, you know, on there. So I start up and I'm ready to go for work, and then I reward myself and say, "All right, I'm gonna jump on Messenger for a little bit, you know, but just for ten minutes and talk with friends." Um, so, and I actually don't do those things during my assigned work work time. And it can be hard to, to develop the discipline to do that, but um, but you can do it. If it's just for two hours, you can do it. And then it really does feel like a reward when you do it. Um, now, if you do mess up, uh, try not to be too hard on yourself. <laughs> um, like little comic said, you know, with the cake, at least you tried. Um, so one thing is I sort of think of it like a New Year's resolution. And I know that my news resolution uh, was to work out every day at the gym before I went to the office on campus. And I know from prior experiences over former news resolutions that sometimes if I messed up, then that quickly had a downward spiral and I just gave up on the whole thing forever. And so I gave myself permission this year uh, to say, well, you know, try as hard. And if you happen to miss a day because you were running late or whatever, 
then you know what happens happens just make sure you do it the next day and i would and so i would say well until the lockdown happened i would say pretty for sure three to four days a week for sure i was working out at the gym um and i think that if i try to say all right i'm doing it every day and then when i messed up felt bad about it i probably would have given up uh, before that so just just keep out things all right, uh, so this is my, my last slide, and it can be very involved. So, but basically the key idea, the idea is to physically separate where you, so not just temporally, not just by time, but also by place, like where you work and where you play. Um, it's important to actually have a, an appropriate work area. Um, so, don't just say, stay in your bed. Say, I'm going to work on my laptop for bed. Or don't do it on the couch in front of your TV. And I know students were up and down. We got, I work best with music playing. So, so I think work can maybe be more enjoyable when music is playing. You do not work as well when music is playing. Okay. Your output won't be as good, and it will actually take longer for you to accomplish your task if music is like. Now, there is studies have shown this, by the way, so I'm not just talking off the top of my head. Um, there have been numerous studies that have established this. Now, the one exception is for classical music, because it turns out part of the reason why you don't work as well with music is um, when there are words involved, the part of your brain wants to process those words, um, and that's taking away from your brain power. So, but if you listen to something that's instrumental without words, then you can actually help. That's the only time that uh, having background music can actually help. Now, I'll get off my soapbox now, about this, but I hear, hear that all the time from students. Uh, you are not working as effectively if you are, have the TV on or if there is music with lyrics that are playing. So uh, you really want to have a separate area and say, this is the area where I work and this is the area where I play. You know, the living room with the TV, that's where you play. The dining room with your laptop on the dining room table, that's where you, you work. And actually, to be honest, so there's this cartoon on the side, by the way. I don't know if you're familiar with that logo. That's a CGP Grey, uh, extremely famous YouTuber. Uh, he only puts out episodes maybe a few times a year, but when they are, oh, they are so good. Uh, so he actually put one out last week. I put a link to it here. Um, I, Dave, can you make the PowerPoint accessible to people later on so they can actually click the link? Um, yes, I, I don't know not if a you problem. Click it now. Uh, if you just do a, a Google search at some point for, oh, I miss, I said GSP. <laughs> I had something on my mind. It's CGP. Great. I'll fix that typo. Um, so Z is CGP, which are his initials, Gray. Uh, or you can just Google Spaceship U. Uh, but he talks about this uh, idea of separating work and play. It's only like a little 10 minute video and it's all animated. He does his own drawings. It's, it's really cool. He gives a lot of good ideas about uh, what you should have in your work area and play area. And uh, in fact, I realized that one of the things I said about, oh, keeping your laptop on the dining table, that's actually something he doesn't recommend because he says you should also separate out your, your lunch break area where you eat from where you play. Um, but all right, so those are just, uh, I think, some main suggestions for my uh, ways I think you can improve your productivity and maybe get away from some bad habits. Uh, I'd like to turn it over now to any questions the audience may have, either to me directly or to each other. And Does anyone have any questions? Feel free to, to shout it out or write in the chat, and I'll be, I'll be happy to pass it on. Steve, I guess I have a question. Sure. Um, so um, I'm not in school, but I am working. So sort of the same thing. Um, I'm in a house with, a, with a, my wife and two small kids. Um, they're all over the place. Yeah, are they you small have, age kids? Or? Yes, uh, six and 11. All right. Do you have a suggestion for uh, uh, how to deal with that? How to, um, I mean, even now they're running around in front of me. Um, even if I block myself out, do you have any suggestions? Have you seen any suggestions? So about I can say what, so, so I'm a little bit older than most uh, college students. And so I don't have kids myself, but I do have a lot of um, friends my age that have kids. And so one thing that they do, 
And they, they think that before they did that, so part of the problem is they used to sort of get mad at the kids or raise their voice a bit because they're like, I'm trying to work here and so forth. It's like, you know, you can't necessarily expect the kids to know that, right? You know, in your case, you know, they're six and eight years old, right? So they have their own little separate work area and they actually made this pretty little sign that they made out of like paper. And I think their kids maybe even helped them decorate a little bit, but it's something like, mommy's working, you know, do not knock unless you're dying. But I think she said in parentheses, in which case call 911. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she put that in her door and then she closes her door and so the kids know when they see that it's like all right we're not supposed to bug mommy now for you know because they're fighting or because they want whatever so um they know that that's mommy's time to work so and then she takes the side down she spends it so part of her breaks is she goes and she spends time with the kids so um you know how much of a break that is i don't know but I, i'm sure for her it could be a you know a difference from uh having to, to work remotely. So anyway, that's, that's one possible suggestion. Okay. A question came in from Sam. Um, I often find it really hard to focus when I'm at home, even when I'm in a quiet place. What should I do to help get me back on track? Yeah, so it could be, again, I'm stealing a little bit from a CGP Gray's video, but I think part of the reason why that might be is because you're you you're not used to your home as being a workplace so mentally you're not really there so i don't necessarily think the quiet is necessarily the issue i think it's just you know being in a place that's normally you're you know oh i go back home and you know see my friends or my, at least my family here and that means it's not school time right so your brain associates that so i think if you just dedicate a particular area and you know, this area is only used, you know, four hours a day, one in class time, and that's it. It could even just be a particular little corner of the room where you stick a, a desk or a chair, and you only go to that spot during those four hours a day when you're in class or doing homework, and the rest of the time, you're out there, you know, with your siblings or your parents or watching TV or doing something else elsewhere. And then it actually becomes a physical transition when it's time for work. And ideally, it's at a specific time of day two. So your brain kind of gears up and knows that, okay, 10 a.m. every day, I'm going to my corner. And I don't think there's a punishment. It's just, this is like your job. This is now your workplace thing. And hopefully that can help if you're just finding, you know, in generic, oh, even when it's quiet, I'm having trouble working. Okay. Um, so if you have any additional questions for Steve, feel free to, to, to write in the chat. I can get it to him later. But for now, we're going to turn things over to Jason. Um, Jason is going to speak about student groups at CCI. Um, so let me turn things over. Jason, are you there? Yep. Oh, feel free to, yep, there you go. Can everybody hear me okay? Are we good? Yes, feel free to, you should be able to share your screen at this point. Awesome, yep. You see my screen? Yep. Awesome. Uh, first off, I just want to say good job, Steve. Um, I will definitely be using those tactics um, and on my 270 quiz tonight. So, but here today I'll be talking about um, life at Drexel and being a part of uh, a community and a club. So at Drexel, a big part of Drexel, um, a big part of your life in college is finding your passions, right? And through finding your passions, you uh, find your friends and then you go into organizations like the ones I'm involved in. So I've had the pleasure to be involved in many organizations in the past few years since I've been at Drexel, one of them being SACE, um, another being Onyx Valley, and then uh, at the end, I'll discuss more about uh, the Microsoft Student Partner Program. So first off, SACE. I joined SACE my freshman year. And SACE is, as you see in the screen, uh, Society of Asian Scientists and Engineers. So coming into college, um, there wasn't really a community for Asian engineers in my high school. So I made it almost like a priority to go find that group. And so I've been in SACE for two years now. Uh, I was junior director this year, next year I'll be professional director. And I've worked very closely with Dave and 
uh, CCI to try to put something out for the juniors. So like I said, SACE is primarily uh, preparing everybody, specifically Asians, uh, to be professional and prepared for the workforce, right? So we are founded on three pillars, uh, professionalism, cultural, and community. So we try to use these three pillars uh, and try to make the best out of um, promoting Asian culture and Asian leadership in STEM. Uh, a big part of SACE is our mentorship program. And so we offer this every year. Uh, I'm a mentor to two people in CCI. And it's, uh, SACE is comprised of uniquely all majors, surprisingly. Even though it's advertised as a STEM org, we have business majors, we have art majors, and they all come together under, under this one roof to promote Asian leadership and um, uh, Asian awareness. Uh, fun fact, this month is actually uh, Asian Pacific uh, month. And so a uh, big initiative of SACE, what we're doing right now, we're hosting um, events on our Discord. Um, and we're just getting everybody together, watching movies and just trying to spread um, Asian culture. Another big part of SACE has been the conferences. Um, so SACE has had the pleasure of winning uh, strongest chapter uh, nationally among all SACE chapters um, in the past th uh, two years. We're going for a third this year. Um, and it's just an amazing community to be in and such a supportive community for uh, minority students and people just trying to get and break into the tech field. Transitioning to Onyx. So we founded Onyx Valley uh, last year, uh, back in April. Uh, we were approached by an organization called Onyx Valley back in uh, Philadelphia, the city. And so it's a hip hop, it, it, it started in like a hip hop institute. It's almost like Bayada, right? An incubator. And Onyx Valley basically was founded on the principles of promoting um, diversity and user experience, specifically for black engineers and black um, developers. But we decided to expand on that and uh, brought in and out for, to include everybody. And so we have majors, not only in CCI, uh, but they span in Westfall and um, the other colleges as well. And so we've grown a community. Now we are 120 strong, and we're actually in the process of transitioning uh, from current eboard to new eboard, and they definitely are in safe hands. In addition to uh, this new growth, we also had the opportunity to be affiliated with some corporate uh, partners, one of them being Adobe XD. So one of the eBoard members uh, was very fortunate enough to get a contact from Adobe, and we ended up partnering with them for the later end of the year back in January. And so basically what we did was offer workshops, offer free merch, and just spread Adobe XD and awareness on campus, All right? Um, another one is Microsoft. So kind of transitioning into that as well. Uh, I'm a Microsoft student partner, one of two, uh, on Drexel campus. And we are a worldwide program led by Microsoft, obviously. And we have over 3,000 student partners all across the world. We are a global uh, group of campus ambassadors. And our primary goal is basically to spread Microsoft tech and offer workshops on like Azure and Microsoft technologies that span across and outside of the classroom. So like I said before, um, our primary goal is just to spread Microsoft technology and help others, right? 
that's the goal of being a software developer. That's the goal of being someone in tech. Our job is basically to help and promote technology, right? And so you guys can be involved too. It is very easy to apply. Um, there are stages that you have to go through, alpha one, alpha two, and you get subscription benefits and other ben benefits like free LinkedIn learning, free uh, LinkedIn premium as you move up. I actually had the opportunity um, to go to um, Mexico City back in March, I believe. Obviously it was canceled because of coronavirus, but uh, definitely looking forward to that once we all get back to normal. But these are the two student partners on campus, me obviously, and another individual, Kwaku. So we've hosted Microsoft events on campus before, uh, most notably was the Dragon Hacks. Um, in accordance with Onyx Valley, we came together and we uh, offered a UX challenge and we hosted an introduction to Azure and offered an Azure bot award to uh, the best person who used Azure as well. So how to apply, it's very easy. Anybody can apply. Uh, I see some professors and faculty in the chat. I truly recommend you uh, advertise this to the students. It's great to have a community on campus and I think Microsoft is definitely one of the uh, biggest companies who, who really believe in their mission in helping others. And I think just growing that, um, especially on Drexel campus is all beneficial towards us. Um, but I'm gonna open the floor to questions now, if anybody has any questions, feel free. Thanks, Jason. Does anyone have any questions? Feel free to shout it out or write it in the, in the chat. Jason, I do have one question about the student partners. You mentioned there's two on campus. Is there a limit to the number or could it be an unlimited number on campus? It can be unlimited. Okay. Does being a student partner give any sort of leg up in terms of getting a job or a co-op at Microsoft? I hope that's to be determined. Uh, I'll be applying next year, so we'll see. What's the role of student partner at Microsoft while being a student like? Uh, so the role of, I, I guess it can also tie into being uh, like on eboard in these clubs as well. I would say it's stressful. Um, trying to juggle uh, the leadership positions and classes, but definitely when I was on co-op, it was great because like I would just go to work and then the only thing I had to focus on was bettering the clubs. Does anyone have any other questions? Would you recommend this for other clubs? Uh, what do you mean? Peter, do you wanna, do you wanna elaborate? Say the Game Developers Club. I think, uh, oh, do you, does he mean like being Microsoft student partner? I think so. Um, I think being a Microsoft student partner is an added bonus for any club. Uh, I forgot to mention you do get benefits from Microsoft in terms of like financial benefits. So in, for example, uh, one of the things we did at Dragon Hacks was uh, we helped um, fund the food for IEEE. So being a Microsoft partner, Microsoft I guess is affiliated with Subway. They have like a partnership. So we get like 150 free sandwiches 
like bundle sandwiches that we can give out at any event we host. I'll have to keep that in mind when we have Code Fest in the fall. Yes. Any of any further questions? Is there any qual do you, any qualifications to apply? Um. Yes. So, when you apply, you have to send in a video explaining your, I guess, influence on campus. So, what orgs you're involved in. Uh, networking is a big thing. So, if you can show Microsoft you can network, then they will definitely make you a student partner. All right, um, so I wanna thank um, both Steve and Jason. You guys did a great job. Um, I wanna thank the audience for um, your participation um, in the poll with questions. Um, and just remind you, any students out there who are interested in participating in the Spark series, um, feel free to reach out to me, I'm Dave Rakin. You can reach me at uh, dr366 at drexel.edu, um, or you can just look on our website. Um, there is, a, there is a, a page there for the Spark series that you can apply. Um, we'll reach out to you, we'll get you scheduled. Um, we're looking to do these as often as we can. We have, some, we have another one that we're working on for possibly two weeks from now, um, so we'll let you know. Again, if anybody has any questions about anything, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll be happy to answer, happy to help out. This video will be posted on Facebook, or no, sorry, YouTube. So if you wanna refer to any of your friends to it, feel free to go for it. And with that, um, I just wanna say thank you. Have a great rest of the week and stay safe.